Uh, good evening for those that are joining on. Um, I want to say thank you for participating. Uh, I'm going to be, I really, I'm humbled. I'm humbled that I'm going to be able to uh, hopefully interview uh, Ryan Bundy. And as I'm gathering a lot of the research and working with a lot of people, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I want the American people to understand is how evil and corrupt Harry Reid is, including with Adam Laxalt and Steve Seselik the two opponents that are running against Ryan Bundy. Uh, so we have a constitutionalist, Ryan Bundy, going against the swamp. And we know who that swamp is. Anything that's tied directly and indirectly with Harry Reid and corporations like Barrett Gold Inc., uh, Nevada Mining, Center of Biological Diversity with Karen Suckling, uh, most of the universities, uh, who else is out there? Comax, uh, geother uh, Geothermite, all related to Harry Reid and, and the universities, in which I want to touch uh, uh, a little bit about, and how they, how these criminals infiltrated our learning institutions, mainly high school and our, our universities. And you'll notice most of these universities, they'll never teach the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or the Declaration of Independence. So... If you know a rancher out there, a Native American that's losing their land because of the BLM, the Department of Fish and Wildlife and the U.S. Forestry, I'm going to tell you exactly why they're losing it. Look how many pages. I'm going to show and demonstrate how many pages here on this live stream with Ryan Bundy, in addition to these documents right here and then these two documents right here. Uh, this is going to be amazing. And, um, and please uh, share this live stream as much as possible. I'm going to bring on Ryan Bundy. Ryan. Yes, sir. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, th this is amazing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know you've been busy, extremely busy going everywhere across Nevada. I've been a few places. <laughs> so I'm going to start off. How do, you, how do you feel about getting the endorsement of Ron Paul? Well, you know, uh, Ron Paul has been a hero of mine for a long time. And so, uh, you know, I met him, I've met him several times, but this spring I run into him at a Lincoln Day dinner for, uh, uh, in Utah, and, and we sat and chatted for a little while, he and Daniel McAdams and my dad and I, and so that, that was fun. Um, anyway, I, I knew that he supported our cause. Uh, and so I figured I should ask him for an endorsement, and he readily gave it when I asked. So that, uh, that was good. That, I mean, he's an amazing man, a constitutionalist, a constitutional scholar, in my opinion. Uh, you know, there's another gentleman by the name of Justin Amash that he's an amazing guy. But, I mean, after what you have been through, uh, your family has endured, and you standing up on the principle of the Constitution, I mean, you're right. You are the, up there with, with Ron Paul. I can't get any better than that. Well, I just do what I can do. It's all it's all life is. You know, I I didn't go out seeking fame and I just uh stood my ground when trouble came, that's all. No, t t and you know what you endured. I, I mean, obviously with all the videos out there and your brother, uh, you know, and and your dad, it, it's astonishing that that we, the American people, uh, have not, there's, there's not enough Americans that have woken up. And those that have woken up, uh, what do we do to get me, people mobilized? What do you see in, in, in trying to restore the republic and not having Donald J. Trump as a president? Well, uh, I guess trying to understand your question is, you know, to mobilize, to mobilize to what, um, I guess. You know, right now, of course, we're in the election season. And so I would think mobilizing would be, you better understand who your candidates are and you better be measuring them uh, against the, the Constitution. In other words, um, we shouldn't just be electing somebody because we know their name or because they're of this party or that party, but each candidate should be weighed and measured according to the standard 
in which uh, they should be upholding. And of course, that, that measuring rod is the Constitution and understanding the proper form of government. Now, if we, if we don't have an understanding of, of what the proper form of government is supposed to be, then we won't know how to measure those candidates. And so hopefully people have mobilized before now in studying and learning and understanding proper form of government so that they can recognize whether or not a candidate is worthy to fulfill an office. And it's not just uh, fame, fortune, it's not their education, you know, their scholastic education, but it is the principles upon which they stand. And, and I always say that party does not matter. Party does not matter. What matters, again, are those principles for which you're willing to stand on. So think, know your candidates. Don't yeah. vote uninformed. <laughs> Absolutely. And obviously, Ron Paul measured, that, uh, measured up to that. Uh, what, what do you know of Steve Cecilak and, and Adam Laxalt? And, and it comes to my understanding that Adam Laxalt uh, won't debate you. Why is that? I guess it's two questions in one. My first question would be is, do you, how well do you know Steve Cecilak and, and Adam, and Adam Laxalt? And then regarding Adam Laxalt, the Republican, uh, so-called Republican, uh, why don't you think he wants to debate you? Well, the first part of your question is, is uh, I've only met Steve Sisolak one time uh, face to face. That was, uh, you know, for about five minutes. You know, he's friendly enough um, in a face to face meeting. Um, I can give him that. But uh, when I listen to his uh, positions, particularly on the Second Amendment, and I also know that he's been county commissioner here for a while, and I know some of the dealings that he's been dealing with um, the federal government concerning land use, um, and I see that he does not regard the constitutional law of the land. And so for those reasons, I, he's not good for Nevada. Uh, Laxalt, um, you know, I can only assume that he doesn't want to debate me because there's no way for him to win. Uh, whatever he, whatever involvement he has with me only degrades his capacity. And, uh, um, and so he doesn't want to incur that. And he's an attorney and actually he was holding public office when you were, when your family was uh, enduring uh, this unlawful abuse against you in the political prison. Would that be correct? That is correct. Now, he was not the attorney general in 2014 when the government attacked us. That was uh, Catherine Cortez Masto. And then Adam Laxalt uh, ran for that office during that same year, 2014. And I actually supported him. Uh, not, not, not largely and not openly, but, but I was rooting for him. I certainly wanted Cortez Masto out of there. She's a nightmare. And I had hope in Laxalt that he would stand up and, and protect us. But then, as we were attacked two years later, and we needed him to uphold, you know, and do his duty, he simply ignored us and and just uh, fell away and did nothing and let us suffer at the hands of a foreign government in, on Nevada land. I, I think, I think he, to be honest, I think he was a coward in my definition. Uh, I would agree with that. His <laughs> now, name says he, it all. It, it, he looks a lot. Yeah, I, I think his picture uh, um, speaks for itself. Uh, you know, who, you know, as a Republican, he, I mean, he has the tenacity to call himself a Republican. I mean, but won't debate you. Uh, he reminds me of Dean Heller and, and uh, Mark Amodi. And obviously, you also know Dean Heller and Mark Amodi or, or ever heard of them. Well, I know Dean Heller is running for office here, and he has a lot of support from Donald Trump. Um, I have not personally met Dean Heller. You know, there's, there was a WikiLeaks e email, and the reason why I bring these two names is because uh, it reminds me uh, of, of Adam Laxalt. Uh, these, these emails that were hacked by WikiLeaks demonstrate that, uh, that Dean Heller 
And Marco Molinetto, they were just also behind the Gold Butte National Monument. But when uh, they were not going to help the Bundy family. And I don't know if you've seen this, uh, this, uh, le- the emails from WikiLeaks that they, that they, uh, that they uh, I guess, got. Uh, but I think that these two letters uh, will be so symbolic for those that want to run against Dean Heller and Mark Amodi if, if, if they ever want to get it. But uh, if, with, if and once you read these letters, uh, would you be surprised if they back to betrayed the Bundy family and the Patriots? You know, there was a time there that everybody was running away from the Bundy family, <clears throat> especially during our time of greatest need. Um, seemed like a lot of the politicians particularly were trying to make themselves scarce around us. And, and again, that's part of what Laxalt did. Instead of stepping up and supporting, um, they run. And and so, yeah, that was disconcerting that that there's been a lot to that. And, and it seems like it's an epidemic, not just in, the, in, in, in D.C., but in, the, in, in within the legislators. And the reason why I say D.C. is for the fact that when Sean Cox and I went down to D.C. with Jeff Banta, uh, we went to Mark Amodi's office, and <laughs> he was nowhere. Actually, he beelined it out of there. Uh, it, you know, the, just like Adam Laxall beelining a debate with you. Well, it's a shame. You know, they're supposed to be servants to the people, and yet they hide from them. There's a problem there. And so I'm glad that I brought Mark Modi's name because Mark Modi and Steve Seslek are well aware, just like uh, Adam Laxall, behind the Gold Butte National Monument. And with Barack, with Barack Hussein Obama, uh, Loretta Lynch, Ron Wyden, Jeff Merkley, Greg Walden, Harry Reid. <laughs> so this is a document right here. And one of the documents that I actually, I emailed to you, but you will be having these original copies and I, I highlighted every single one. So most of my work is all mostly highlighted and basically will tell you, well, Mark Modi was behind the Gold Butte National Monument. He was in the state of Nevada legislative council, uh, council bureau as a legislative commissioner. And then this commissioner had the Gold Butte National Monument. And one of the most symbolic things is where he, he, with Sisolak and seven universities in the state of Nevada, which I'll be reading them, uh, especially the University University of Nevada University of Nevada Reno and the University of Las Vegas, in which uh, Mark Amodi was well aware of the seven million dollars that he participated back in June 30 of 2003. In addition, another 58 million dollars. And th- these documents can be highlighted, and they're there, well, well articulated. I mean, for you to read, and it'll show and demonstrate to the American people how Mark Amodi was behind the Gold Butte National Monument with Steve Seselak, and, and obviously Adam Laxalt and, and, and uh, Dean Heller. Uh, their names are on these documents. Uh, I don't know if you ever, if you, if you had the time to read, uh, basically, Legislative Commission, Legislative Building, uh, Carson City, Nevada, which was respectfully presented by Paul V. Townsend, SPA Legislator Auditor, on May 26, 2004. I don't know if you ran across that document. Well, I don't know about that particular document, but I do know that Steve Sisolak was involved in the uh, forming of the Gold Butte National Monument. Um, and th- again, that that's part of the land deals that I have spoken about previously. That that he does not understand the Constitution and is not only allowing these things to take place within the county he's a commissioner for, but he's right in the middle of making it happen. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right, and I, and your statement can be backed up with the campaign contributions that he's actually accepting, that, not including Adam Laxalt and Steve Seselik. I'm not, I, we can't leave those two criminals behind because uh, on the total expenditures and FTE from the statewide program gener- general fund appropriation, fiscal year of 2003, who, uh, and, and, and it's outlined right here, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna read to you and it's all highlighted. And the, obviously these are gonna be your original copies. These have already been scanned, but these will be your copies as, as it's highlighted. So whenever you want to debate these guys or any of these criminals, I'll be more than happy. You will, you'll be more than happy to present these documents. Uh, matter of fact, it goes to research and education planning, 
which uh, they allocate they allocated. Uh, hold on, let me let me read these research and evaluation planning center, the Center for Applied Research, Energy Research and Development, uh, Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology, and Energy and Environmental Physics. And who's behind all this? Harry Reid under the under the Harry Reid Center. This is why Harry Reid uh, basically gave a large a large sum of donations to the Harry Reid Institute of, to the University of Nevada. And who who are the corporations that benefit? Ormat, which is a geo geothermite, which is all all the 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 earthquakes that are being affected down in Hawaii and uh and including Nevada and uh there's one more state that that I'm forgetting Ormet through the geothermite extracting the geothermite they're part of and behind us and the University of Nevada they have a uh a seismographic uh program for that so it's Ormet Nevada Mining and Barrett Gold Inc and um and I'm for, and I'm forgetting and oh in the center of biological diversity under the under the desert um, desert resource institute are you familiar with center of biological diversity oh yeah they're the they're those they are those who are behind the whole reason the 2014 standoff took place they're Absolutely. the ones that caught and and who was behind the endangered tortoise with with the Center of Biological Diversity, the Desert Research Institute, which goes through Harry Reid's uh, Harry Reid's uh, what is it? Let me read it again, and I want I want to be I want to be as accurate as possible. The Harry Reid Center, and matter of fact, the total fund expenditures and differences for the twenty two statewide programs at the University of Reno and the University of Las Vegas was fifty five. Fifty-five million eight hundred ninety-seven thousand two hundred eighty-three dollars. I don't know if you've seen that, but that's what it costs the American taxpayers, and it's all written and highlighted right here. And uh, obviously, this is going to be yours for you to read, and everything that's highlighted is basically the points that I'm, I'm driving right here uh, on this live stream. Uh, this is why you, you and your family never had, basically, that you didn't have an opportunity, you didn't have a standing chance to win against these criminals. I mean, the deck was stacked against you. Yeah, there's a lot of money involved, that's for sure. Uh, so, and this is Mark Amodi in this. And I'm going to read just a couple of things here. Uh, one is, and, and they actually even, what's so awesome about this is that they went ahead and defined everything for us. And I, so I'm going to read these three, these three things right here for you and the American people. So to those ranchers and Native Americans, you need to understand why they're stealing your land including these communities. I don't know if you heard uh, the, uh, in, the Engineer Research and Development Center. That, that's basically an industry, uh, for, an industry and public agencies that provide research projects for graduate students and maintaining professional development for facilities. There's the Nevada Bureau of Mining and Geology. Why is the University of Nevada, or Las Vegas, and the University of, of Reno going to go ahead and and basically be funded by the American taxpayers to go and locate minerals for Barrick Golden, uh, Nevada Mining, and Ormat. Can you, can you elaborate on that or help me elaborate on that? You know, I don't know that I can elaborate on that, but that sounds like uh, uh, they're, they're figuring out a way to use public funds and, and the efforts of, uh, you know, school kids to, to forward a, a private corporation. And that's exactly, I, I apologize, I got so excited. That's exactly what it is. And matter of fact, in these documents, they call it bonds and investments and shares. Uh, so the, the National Bureau of Mining and Geology is served the state's needs for geology and mineral resource information and research conducted and research and published reports for the, fo for the focus on the economic development, public safety, quality of life, urban areas of Nevada. Yet. Harry Reid was going after you for through for, I believe Chinese giant E N N and Barrick Gold Inc. I wouldn't know for certain. I've been told a lot of things. I heard a lot of things. And there's a lot of reasons, you know. But uh, 
one thing is for certain that they want control of the land and the resources, whether it be for the gold or whatever. There's lots of things that I've been hearing they've been coming after us for. And would you be but surprised it, if Harry Reid or Rory Reid or Mark Amodi or Dean Heller or Adam Sasala, uh, Steve Sasalak or Adam Laxall would have financial investments through their 401k in, let's say, Ormat, Geothermi, Nevada Mining, Barry Gold Inc., and Chinese giant ENN. Would you be surprised at that? No, I really wouldn't. <laughs> Do you have evidence that they are involved with those? <laughs> you absolutely. Absolutely, and you, you, you're you going to be getting all this information. Matt, uh, so they have another program called the Energy and Evaluation Physics, Energy uh, Source and uh, Energy Source. Then, then you have Nevada Small Business Development. Operations operates a network of office located throughout Nevada to provide general business consulting, geographic information services, uh, technical research and economic information. They broke this down so easily for anybody to understand that a third grader can understand and show, and show what you just stated, using the students to basically locate all these minerals for their own, for their own financial gain. They've got a racket going, it sounds like. So, so here... And, and the reason why I, 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 wanted, I wanted to share this live stream is because back, and, and there's, mo there's more documents, the university community college system of Nevada, of Nevada versus Nevada for sounds in government. You know how you try to exercise your constitutional rights on free speech? Article 1, yes. Section 9. So here on Article 1, they actually articulate, the government articulated an exercise the Constitution, um, it says the United States Constitution in Article 1, Section 9 of the Nevada Constitution protects the rights of persons to engage and express speech activities. Uh, Article, 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 Article 19 of the, of the Nevada Constitution expressed a popular right to circulate referendum and initiate petition in Nevada. Finally, um, uh, governs the right to and use public buildings, collect petitions and signatures. And uh, well, obviously it says the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 9 of Nevada, is basically exercising your free speech. And if you go, it says the, the district court determined that the actions taken by, that actions taken by certain government actors, including appellates, to the restrict response petition circulated activities on their respective properties unlawfully violates respondents' constitutional and statutory rights. What do you think about it? Matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, let me quote it. This is uh, this November 10 of 2014, Supreme Court of Nevada, University and Community College System of Nevada and Regional Transportation Commission of Wasu County, Appellate versus Nevada for sound government response. This is what you basically were doing, exercising your freedom of speech. Part of it, yes. So why is it that they give you a, a zone to exercise, why they gave you and the political prisoners a zone to exercise your freedom of speech, yet they say freedom of speech is access to anyone? Is there a double standard here? Well, yeah, there's definitely a double standard there. Um. But, you know, when, when they set up that uh, free speech zone, what they were basically telling the people of America is that we have no rights except for what they arbitrate. We have no rights except for what they will allow. And um, basically, that would be under the Fourth Amendment rule, or not the Fourth Amendment, sorry, Article 4 of the Constitution, where it states that Congress shall have power to make all needful rules and regulations respecting a territory or other property belonging to the United States. Now, of course, they're claiming these lands under that auspice. The problem is, is that is not constitutional, as you well know um, how I stand, um, how we stand, that the, the land and the resources belong to the state and their people. But um, you know, the, the, the court orders they, they have against us 
clearly state that they're pulling authority from Article 4. Well, Article 4 only gives Congress power over territories, not states. And so, again, the question might be asked, is Nevada a state or is Nevada a territory? Well, according to, um, you know, the process of formation of state and entering the union, Nevada is a state, and yet we're still being treated as a territory. And so herein lies the problem. Now, of course, on uh, in April of 2014, they tried to apply territorial law um, which is an unlimited power by Congress to make all the needful rules and regulations to the area that should belong to Nevada. And, and so, you know, we could see that that is unconstitutional and the people of the country would not allow for that to take place. And they were very offended that the first amendment zones went up. And anyway, that, that did help bring people here and our support though. And, I, I wonder if uh, Adam Laxalt would understand what you just articulated. I don't know if he does or not. You know, <laughs> um, I wish he would. I wish he did. I hope he does. But he hasn't um, shown that he does. He hasn't done anything in support of, you know, statehood. And again, that's one of the reasons I'm running is because I have no faith that he will protect Nevada and recognize it as a sovereign and equal state in the union with the original 13 states. And and I'm afraid that if he is elected governor or if Sisolak is elected governor, that they will go on as with business as usual, allowing the federal government to unconstitutionally control the lands and the resources in Nevada and continue to deprive Nevadans of our rightful place uh, as a state. And so again, that's why I am running. I feel compelled to do so because these others will not do what is needed to do. Amen. And as you, as you look at this, how dirty is Harry Reid? <laughs> yeah, his, his nickname is Dirty Harry. <laughs> About that. Oh, and actually, he has a lot of ties. He got a lot of influence in the federal government. Well, he went uh, went into service as a congressman, not rich, and he come out a billionaire. So there's something going on. Oh no, he was. I think he was representing the people, not the corporations. Come on, Ryan, oh, you know better it? than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know. I, also, because we got to go back to what you endured, what you and your family endured, the enda- all because of the, all be- obviously because of the endangered Gold Butte National Monument and the minings. And Ma- there was an amazing article that was rib- written by Henry uh, Breen, the, da- the dangerous Gold Butte Monument mine shaft entrance being closed. And this, was, this article is dated October 15, 2018. And also, I believe your, your, your dad in this article also commented, but why, why I want to go to this thing, why, why I want to go to this article is because when they were closing these mines, they found an endangered tortoise. Yet, wasn't your family being targeted because of this endangered tortoise by the Center of Biological Diversity and the Defecto government? Well, they always use some critter or, or another as an excuse to take control of the land and deprive people from using it and so you know in this area they use the desert tortoise so yes uh, it's a desert tortoise that their scapegoat and 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 to the people out there uh this is the article i'm referring to this article right here and uh this article right here is 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 by henry breen b-r-e-a-n uh uh, dated october 15 2018 and what's so beautiful what's so beautiful about is if you understand elk Obviously, you know elk, or heard of elk, uh, elko. I, I'm, I'm pronouncing elko. Yes, I know elko. Uh, well, th- that's where basically Barrett Gold Inc. is at, and and they're using helicopters from elko through Barrett Gold Inc. and in closing all these uh, 41 mines. Yeah, but hold on. If they want to make the Gold Butte National Monument because of the endangered species, why do they have? They have to have. Why were there 41 mines operating, and now they're closing 41 mines? Well, what happened to the endangered tortoise and the Gold Butte National Monument to protect the public lands? I mean, that's according to this article. 
You got it upside down there. Oh, guys. okay. I'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's all it's all there written. And I'm gonna, as a matter of fact, uh, as you can see, I even put the names right here, all financially tied to Barrick Gold Inc. and, El and Elko. And I'm going to read those names. And they even went to call it to nonprofit friends. Well, what do they mean by nonprofit friends? This is like to Barrick Gold Inc., to Nevada Mining, to Ormat to a Chinese giant ENN, to the Center of Biological Diversity, to uh, Harry Reid, to Rory Reid, to Gloria Navarro, to George Soros, to Sheriff Gillespie, to Larry Crones. Larry Crones is a, is a, is a geologist, the father of Neo Crones, which Neo Crones was uh, the, interior, the Department of Interiors in which went after you with uh, Daniel P. Love. Steve Beringer, he's a lobbyist for Barrick Gold Inc., in which he's related through Harry Reid because he married one of Harry Reid's sister, Steve Berenger, and is a lobbyist and a lawyer for Barry Gold Inc., Dean Heller, and Mark Amodi, including Bright Source. And when we talk about Bright Source and solar development and lands, this explains why your previous campaign manager, well, I strongly believe she was, she infiltrated your campaign, and as the, as the connections are being slowly tied together through the real estate, would you be surprised if, if Adam Laxalt basically had her infiltrate your campaign? Hey, they do all kinds of dirty stuff. I wouldn't wouldn't uh, surprise me a bit. So I don't know what he's up to. I just keep going with what I know is right and keep trying to promote that. And whatever opposition comes up, I just keep going. So. You know what? I, I, I admire your passion. I admire your spirit. I mean, you are a Bundy. And, and by the way, if Steve Sasolak wants to contradict anything that I say, matter of fact, he was embedded with Harry Reid on March 1, 2011, in Congressional Record Senate S-1061. I don't want to take the American people or my, or my word, but I'm going to show it to you right here. This is the bill. If you can see the bill, I don't want to put it upside down. And right there, that is circled. Right there, it has Steve Sasolak. And... And Steve Sasselak, I'm hoping you debate Steve Sasselak and ask him about this bill and how, how convenient, not that he was just a commissioner, but he was in, in front of Congress and Congressional Record Senate S-1061 uh, giving his testimony as a Clark County, Nevada commissioner. So I, I'm hoping you would bring this question. Would you bring this question to Steve Sasselak? Yeah, I could bring that. I need to study it a little more and read your documents to make sure... I can speak intelligently on it, but um, but yeah, I'd bring the question. And, and, the, and the reason why I'm going there is because when you look at all the financial comp, comp not, all, all the finances right here, they all broke them down. And I know it's upside down, but they all broke them down all through the, through the Bureau of Land Management, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, the EPA, uh, what was it? the United States Forestry Service, the Center of Biological Diversity, and all the small business corporations in which we were articulating earlier. It's all broken down and highlighted. And what's amazing is how can they come and say that, that you're not operating under the Constitution or, or following the Constitution and trying to question you as a conspiracy uh, theorist or a conspirator, and yet how come are their names, or most, of these, or most of their names are in these documents? Well, obviously, they're tied in with the money. They often say, follow the money, and you'll find the problem. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you look at it, at this money, it increased from 2002 to 2003 to 2004 to 172928000 dollars to $247 million dollars And this is all written right there. Uh, that that these are their documents, and this is how much financial comp, uh, well, how much they gave these universities to search for minerals, and and obviously, and by the way, uh, they even included uh, nuclear waste. Well, well, if if there's no uranium, and if there's no mercury, and if there's nothing there that causes nuclear waste, well, why would they include nuclear waste in these documents? I don't know. What's your answer to that? What's your thoughts? <laughs> My thoughts is Harry Reid knows where basically most of the uh, minerals are at. 
uh, with through, through the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, and explains why he has investments and has a lot of support and gives a lot of financial support to like uh, Adam Laxalt. He's playing both sides. He's playing Adam Laxalt and Steve Seselak, Dean Heller, and Mark Amodi, and, and, and having Barrett Gold Inc., uh, Nevada Mining, uh, Ormat, which is Ormat's huge in Nevada, in Hawaii too, and, and, uh, and, and why they get campaign contributions and how they pass unconstitutional laws that violate the, the Constitution. Well, what uh, there's a lot to be learned here. Obviously, there's you got some documentation. You've been doing some study. How do we best apply that to our situation now? Um, like I said, we've for a lot of years we've wondered or you know heard all kinds of stuff about you know why they want to take our ranch. You know what's the reason behind behind the attack and. Um, this stuff now you're uncovering may explain a lot of that. And, 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 and well, I mean, obviously Harry Reid, I mean, we, you just can't, you, that, that name, that name will always live with Nevada, dirty Harry Reid. Uh, let, let me list out the universities, university of Nevada, uh, university of, of, of Nevada, Las Vegas, Univer, uh, university state college foundation, community college of Southern Nevada foundation, uh, Truckee Meadows Community College Foundation, Western Nevada Community uh, College Foundation, the British, the, the Great Basin College Foundation. And by the way, this is the same Great Basin that's tied to the same Great Basin Society that is tied to the Malheur Wildlife Refuge. And then you got the Desert Research Institute Foundation, which is tied to the Center of Biological Diversity. And obviously, as I always tell Shauna Cox, uh, your favorite person, uh, Karen Suckling. <laughs> mm. And, and, yeah. and it, it basically says a total net asset increase, 150 million, dollars and 11% increase in giving money to these universities. And I don't know if you're able to see that, but uh, obviously these documents will be yours. I posted hyperlinks for the American people to to basically start downloading uh, in this caption in this live stream. They already been down uh, downloaded. They're already in a PDF file, so they're already backed up. These original copies will go to you, so you can study them and you'll see the names on these documents. Uh, so uh, what's uh, w so? How do you tell a rancher or Native American say, you know what, you got to fight for your constitutional rights because the the here's the evidence. So how do you persuade them to stand for the constitutional rights or educate anybody out to just stand up for their for the constitutional rights when they have uh, criminals within a defective government like uh, because of Harry Reid marching at their doorstep and trying to take them off their land or forcibly remove them off their land? Well, that's what they're doing. Um, I don't know why, you know, anyway. You got some good questions there, Laz. Well, I mean, it, it, it's just, uh, there's a lot of emotion going on. When, when you start reading all these documents and knowing what, you, what, what, what your family endured, and also there's a, right now a, a political prisoner unlaw, unlawfully incarcerated because of the criminals that I mentioned. Uh, I mean, it, it tears you up because you have innocent men unlawfully incarcerated. Uh, obviously, what you're endured, and yet these criminals are still profiting off these minerals, off the, the theft of the land, of the water, of all the natural resource from all the ranchers and Native Americans and communities out there. And yet, when, this is why I said, how do we mobilize? How do we get the people active and learning the Constitution? How, you know, promote the Constitution like what Ron Paul and you are doing. It. And, and, and uh, what's that awesome uh, anchor out there in, in New York, uh, Andrew Napolitano and Justin Amash? These people, these constitutionalists, how do we wake up the American people and say, you know what, it's a constitution that we got to go back to? Well, you know, uh, pain is one of the best motivations there is. Most people will do all sorts of things to avoid pain. And so oftentimes people don't get involved until they have a little skin in the game. They don't get involved until it actually hurts them, affects them. And, and you know, I, 
I, I, you know, maybe we wouldn't have been involved either had they not attacked us. Um, and of course, you know, their attacks on us began, you know, 25, 30 years ago. And so we've been engaged for a long time. Now, you know, people who get engaged without having skin in the game, that's great um, because they're seeing the problems without having been personally affected. But the fact of the matter is, is that it is personally affecting so many more people um, is why more people are getting engaged. Um, and so hard times move us to, to action. Um, and so are times hard enough? Are people going to move to action as it is now? Or, or must they get harder before we have enough move, movement to make the needed changes, whereas to bring peace and prosperity back to America? That's the question. You know, my father has said that he would always do whatever it takes. And what does it take? You know, no one ever knows until it's upon them. And, um, um, and you know, but we're still committed to that. And, and right now, with me running as governor, is part of whatever it takes. And, and this may be a good uh, way to, to solve some of the problems. Uh, we shall see. It may not be. But uh, if it's not, well, then another means and method will have to be, re be figured out. Well, you know, it, it's funny. Uh, Center of Biological Diversity, and, and, and this explains a lot because it also in this, in, in, in this grant, in this federal grant through the university, to the universities and community college system of Nevada, uh, that thank God for the single audit report for the year ended in June, uh, June 30th, 2004, and 2004, uh, demonstrates how the, how, how through, through George Soros and media matters, because media matters and Harry Reid being tied into, into this and actually including media matters is involved in this and, and you'll see it w when you read it that they dumbed down the American people and, call, and calling you guys or, or the Bundy family and the political prisoners racist. And yet here I come along and I'm, I'm we're, we're, me and a lot of people are blowing things up and bringing out the evidence. And yet they still classify me as a racist. I, 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 I might as well just be white. I, I don't know what I'm well, trying to say. Well, you know, Laz, I've never, I've never even, uh, I've never even worried about what uh, what nationality or 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 uh, uh, ethnic background you are. I, I don't even, I don't even know. Are you Native American? Are you Mexican? Or what? What? Like I said, if I'm so racist or we're so racist, I haven't even been concerned to bother to find out. Because so. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. And, and I, mean, I mean, I love the way you are. Man, you are you are one of the people here and, and you are a brother. You are a, a good man. So I appreciate that. And that, and that's what I'm trying to bring to the American people, convey this, that it, it's not about race. They want to make it about a race. Harry Reid, uh, Loretta Lynch, uh, George Soros, uh, Barack Hussein Obama, James Comey, Robert Mueller, Ron White and Jeff Merkley, Greg Walden, uh, Rory Reid, uh, MSNBC, ABC, CN, they want a race war. This is what they want, but what they can't stand is when we, when people like me and others that are a minority bringing out the facts and standing with the Bundy family, and and because of the information that we that myself and other people are, are putting out there, and we know as minorities that that what the Bundy stood for in the Constitution is morally right, and because of that, we continue to stand with the Bundy family, and we won't back down against this effective government because the more we tie this all these documents. The, the, the deeper this swamp is, this is why one of the reasons they're targeting Donald J. Trump. Uh, and obviously, sadly, but true, Donald J. Trump has a, lot of, has a lot of swamps that are against your family for standing up for the Constitution. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. You know, I don't know. I, I never have been able to figure that out. Uh, the Constitution should be championed amongst uh, government, and yet they try to avoid it and go around it at every every way. I guess that's because it limits their power, and they're they're greedy for power. Um, anyway, so that's why they don't like the Constitution. Well, 
prime example, you were you were you wanted to go see Donald J. Trump at this uh, convention there in, in Las Vegas. Would that be correct? Yes, I attempted to to reach him through several different avenues. Yes. And so were you prevented from going in? I wasn't prevented from going into the to the to the speech. Um, you know, I tried to reach his advisors and, you know, assistants to be able to have a meeting with him. Being that I am a candidate for Nevada governor, um, and there's a likely chance that I will obtain that seat, uh, you know, he, he, he needs to be able to work with me. And I would certainly like to begin that relationship sooner rather than, than later. And, and also, if he is, uh, as he says he is, trying to drain the swamp and clean the corruption, there's no candidate in Nevada better than I that can do that. So he should be speaking with me. But the problem is, is he's got wrapped up into the party politics too much. I know he started out as an independent candidate himself, but then joined the Republican Party. Um, and now the Republicans are controlling him to a large degree and are trying to prevent him from meeting with me, I do believe. Um, Whereas and, and who, he was he who was he there with in the that convention? Problem. Say that again. Who was there in the convention? Meaning, who 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 did Don, Donald Trump meet there? Support there at the time. It was supposed to be mostly for Dean Heller, um, you know, but he supported just generally all the Republican candidates. Um, you know, Adam Lacks not. He did mention his name at one point, and that he had a good family or whatever, but uh, it wasn't a very strong endorsement, if it was an endorsement at all. Um, but uh, he was there to support Dean Heller, mostly. Does the same Dean Heller that was behind Barry Gold Butte National Monument and then decided to uh, run away when your, your family was going through this uh, crisis because of the defect of government? Interesting. <laughs> I, I I mean I laugh because of the hypocrisy within DC. Well, it makes you wonder uh, where where does the swamp end and where does the swamp begin and how deep does it go? Yeah. Is Sadly, there a bottom to it? In Nevada, it goes it goes extremely deep, as you know, with your previous campaign manager. Uh, that's how deep it's going to go. I, I mean, and that just the real estate the real estate deals are are just mind boggling, and, and I'm going to slowly bring this out. As when I'm doing all these documents, there's going to be several series of what I'm going to do to, to educate the people from Nevada into why they should report, why they should support and vote for Ryan Bundy. Uh, the, these, are, this, these are not the, the last documents. I, we're just getting started. Uh, and and I, want, I need to go back to Steve, uh, Steve Seselak because obviously you may be seeing Steve Seselak shortly. And in this report, University of Community College System of Nevada, single audit report for the year ended at two, uh, June 30th, 2014. The one I read was 2000, uh, 2003. This is 2004, right? And so I don't know if you're able to see it here. And here's the date uh, right there, the, the, the logo, the Nevada logo. And then you'll see Steve Salasalak's name. And he was here as a board of uh, regents. And here his name is. I did not create, hyperlake or fabricate or alter this document. This is downloaded. There are already PDF files. There's a hyperlink for, for you. And, and these original copies will be going to you. And why I want to bring this out is because one of the most amazing things, and it's still at, at the time when you were going through all this, and, the, and these, all, all these names will always stick out because it's it, it just covering their tracks. They're constantly covering their tracks and what they did, not just to you, but other ranchers and Native Americans uh, throughout the, through the United States of America. And as you can see, you probably know some of these names already right here. Yeah, one thing that's difficult uh, uh, with your camera is not, it's, it's kind of giving us a mirror image, so we're having to read everything backwards. And then when you put it upside down, it even gets more fun. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we can see the yellow in the highlights. <laughs> so this is for you. This is, I'm going to make. So when they go, it's going to be so easy. So the Department of Agriculture, 
all, all, all tied to the, to the university and community college system of Nevada, in which the American taxpayers uh, are funding at the tune of $200 million. The Department of Agriculture, USDA, the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense, isn't that what Ron Wyden and Lisa Murkowski and Jeff Merkley participated with, uh, with uh, Uranium One, with, Bear with uh, Uranium One, uh, Russia, and the Clinton Foundation with James Comey and Robert Mullen taking highly enriched uranium to Russia. That's the Department of Defense. And Ernest Munez was the Department of Energy, one of them that also signed off, uh, that were also signed, one of the departments that signed off on it, on, on, the, on the transaction of the highly enriched uranium, the 20% of the highly enriched uranium. So then you got the Department of Health and Human Services, you got the Department of House and Urban Development, the Department of Interior. Well, who was in the Department of Interior when you were when they wanted to steal your land, your, your family's land, and also unlawfully incarcerate you? And by the way, that was Harry Reid. Harry Reid with Neil Crones. Neil Crones' father, uh, uh, Larry Crones, uh, works as a geologist for Barrett Gold Inc. As Stephen Berling, the lobbyist and the lawyer for Barrett Gold Inc. That's, that's married to. Uh, one of Harry Reid's daughters. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the National Science Foundation, and the Department of Labor. But the most three that should stick out is the Department of Defense, the Department of Energy, and the Department of Interior. What do you, if you were to, the governor, what would you do with all these three agencies that are stealing the minerals uh, for, the, for the corporations like Barrett Gold Inc., Nevada Mining, Ormat, uh, Geothermite, and... Uh, God, there's so many names. I'm just trying to recall everyone. What would you do with all these corporations that these, these criminals have you financial know, the, investments in? Again, well, properly, the land belongs to the state and their people. And Nevada does have a division of mining and operations. You know, if there are mineral rights that are established, then, you know, Nevada needs to honor those. But, um, but yeah, there's going to be some looking at to all that situation because right now what's taking place is all those minerals are being taken out of Nevada and the Nevada's people are getting no benefit out of it. Very little anyway. And so, should, yeah, that's should, an issue should, that we're going to have to address. And I don't have all the answers right now. Should the, should the Nevada, should the people of Nevada, because it's the state of Nevada, on the state of Nevada, should they also profit off these minerals? To a degree, yes. And just like, and why I'm saying that is because uh, Alaska has 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 a PFD, a permanent dividend fund, in which when Exxon and BP and Conical Phillips extract all the oil from there, uh, the 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 people uh, of Alaska get a PD, a permanent dividend fund. Would you, if that was the case, would you apply this to the people for the people in Nevada? Yeah. If they were to vote for you for governor, something like something like that needs to be considered. Yes, and that I uh, I would need to do some study on how that works in Alaska and how that might be applied in Nevada. Um, but yes, that's something that, that should be considered. So and 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 it's amazing that Steve Sesolak his name all over this. Yeah, this is the same Steve Sesolak that sued. Uh, the the Clark County because of noise ordin ordinance of, from the airport that won, I think it was $2 million. What do you think about that? If he's looking out for the best interest of Clark County and keeping the money, why would he want to sue Clark County? And the taxes that end up paying this $2 million. Well, you know, uh, that airport back in the day was way out of town. And the town's grown up and built all the way around it. So, you know, who's encroaching upon who here? And besides, that airport, um, you could never relocate it. Uh, I mean, man, it, there's so much expense in, in the construction of that airport where it is now. You know, to, to relocate an airport because of some noise would be, would be an outrageous expense. It's just not feasible. If you were to, if you anyway, were to debate, so it's ridiculous. Uh... It's ridiculous. They said it's ridiculous that that he would uh, try such a lawsuit and it just just an enrichment program. So, would you ask him one of these questions? Would you, would we, if 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 it comes to a debate with you, Steve Sesla, 
would you ask him the, what, the, this question? Why, why did he sue the the Clark County Clark County uh, and, and have the taxpayers pay two million dollars for noise ordinance? Yeah, and who received that two million dollars? By the way, do you know? Does it show there? Oh yeah, Steve Cecilai. Okay, and and how did did that reduce the noise at all? Did it, did it <laughs> no, the, the people of Nevada at all. Or is the noise still there? I mean, what was accomplished here besides enriching himself? Okay, exactly. So yeah, those are some good questions. We have. Um, All right. uh, hey, uh, uh, Laz, we've been on, uh, on this call for an hour now. Okay. We're just uh, needing to get back to things so we can bring this to a close if possible. Yeah. Well, obviously, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I can't wait till you get a hold of these documents and start and start reading these documents and. Uh, Hopefully, you'll be start bringing the, these uh, uh, some of these questions. Especially the last question would be: Is why would the fire department, uh, the, the, the 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 fire department, the union of the fire department, would donate to Steve Sesolak when it was Steve Sesolak that reduced uh, the, the program for the fire department? That's one of the questions. But anyways, at the end of the day, these are the documents that I would like for you to to see, and I appreciate this. Okay, thanks, Laz. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. God bless. Okay, have a good evening.